This video covers some major functions inside of Excel. I classify these as summary functions. They take in a range of cells and give some sort of result based off of their total values. Let's do some examples. So first off, we have the sum function. Sum is one of the first functions most people use, and it's probably one of the most useful overall. It's also incredibly flexible. As you look at the examples I have here, this one here it has sum, and I give it one argument, which is a range reference. Range references go from one cell to another cell. So I start at cell B5 and go all the way to B D6. These are also separated by a semicolon. So you can manually type them in, like A1 to C4, or you can draw a box with the mouse to get the range that you want. So if you look at the, the little tooltip for sum, you'll see that inside of it, it does show this is only one single number reference inside. If I want to do more than one, I can add a comma and do something else as well. So now I can do the sum of those cells plus one, or I could do the sum of those plus the value that is in B14. So you see, you can do a lot of stuff with sum, either a range reference, an actual number, or just a regular reference to another number. You can combine them all together, as you see in the example that we have here. There's a couple other functions as well. We have count and count a. The difference is that count only shows the number of numbers in a range. So if you look at the example I have here, it goes from B13 to D15. I have one, two, three, four, and three inside of the cells, which is why count gives me a total of five. Count A also includes text. So now instead of saying five, it also includes the A, the B, and the C. With both, you'll see as I delete things that the numbers change. And so it looks very looks inside of the cells and finds the numbers that match. Average works in a very similar way to sum. You give it if some reference, some numbers inside, either references or range references or single numbers, and it'll go ahead and give you the average or mean. <clears throat> You could actually go something like this as well, sum divided by count, B13 to D15, and get the same result. At least you will once I get the parentheses in. There we go. So this gives you the exact same result as average, just it adds up all the numbers inside of a range, and then divides them by the count of numbers inside of the range. But it's more convenient to just write average. We also have max and min. Min gives the smallest number in a range, and max gives the biggest number inside of the range. So these are some basic functions you have to play with. One of the things that's important to understand here, though, is how Excel deals with range references when you add or delete cells. So if I go to a new sheet over here, let me go ahead and zoom in. Let's say I have this range set up, and I'm going to put a sum on the bottom. A1 to A5. Now when I do sum A1 to A5, it's going to give me all five numbers, which seems fairly straightforward. Now if in the middle, if I come in here later and I insert a new row and type a number into it, you'll see that the sum now does get updated because it's a range reference from A1 to A5. When I inserted a call and inserted a new row, it moved down and turned to A6. So when you use a range like this, as you insert things inside, you'll see it gets updated. Now that's different if I do a different method. Let's say that instead of doing it like that, I did equals sum A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. Now this is a lot more work because you do more typing. But also if I come in here later and insert a new range, you see that it doesn't get updated now. That's because I told it to use specific cells and not a range. Now when I insert new ones inside of that, it's not going to be updated. Now if I delete one of these, you'll see I get a range reference error. That's because I was pointing specifically to that cell and then I deleted that cell, so it gets rid of it. So that's something just to be aware of. The other thing to be aware of with sum is that I see people do this sometimes. They'll add one number to a second number, to a third number, to a fourth number, to a fifth number. The reason why you don't want to do that is because it doesn't really do anything. The addition happens first. All of these numbers are going to be added together with pluses. Then at the last step, it's going to take the sum of all those numbers and then pass it into the function, which is just going to give you the number out. 
So it makes no difference. It's better if you're going to do the addition like that just to not have the function wrapping it because it makes no difference whatsoever. You get the same result if you used min because again these are all going to be added together first and then min's only going to get one number. You're going to get the same result with average, you're going to get the same result with max, so it's pointless to, to write equals sum and then do all the arithmetic inside of it. The only time that sum function gets multiple arguments is when you use a comma. So now sum is going to get five things and it's going to add them all together and return the result. So this way it actually makes sense. But again, it seems like overkill for the situation. Usually when you're doing sum, you're doing it because you want to have a range reference. For example, A1 to A5. So generally use range references with these kinds of functions. So go ahead and take a minute and try and solve the problems that we have here and then come back to the video. Okay, now that you've done a couple of problems, let's move on to this more complicated example. This example shows you how to use min and max to set a floor or a ceiling on a number. So here's a practical example. Let's say we want to calculate a sales commission right here. We're giving a salesperson 10% of whatever sales they make. So the actual formula is fairly straightforward. I'm just going to do the number of sales multiplied by, multiply by 10%. So now it's going to give me the number 1,000. Very easy and straightforward. But let's say you have a business rule where you want to make sure that the commission is in a certain range. You don't want it to be too big and you don't want it to be too small. One way we can do this is with min and max. The confusing thing here is you really need to think through having the maximum commission. You might even re kind of relabel this in your head as a ceiling. And the minimum you think of it as the floor. So we're saying we don't want it to go above this point and we don't want it to go below this point. And so what we'll do is we'll use the opposite min or max function. Think of it like this. If I want to make sure that it's not smaller than the floor, I'm going to give it two numbers. I'm going to give it the floor number and I'm going to give it the actual number. What I'm going to say there is I want to return the larger of the two. And this is kind of the confusing part. When you do a floor, you might think you want to use the min function, but we don't actually want the smaller of the two numbers because then we get the smaller of the two numbers. We want the bigger of the two numbers. So we're going to do max. Max is going to say, give me two numbers, the actual commission rate and the floor. Now this is saying, give me the bigger of the two numbers. So if the commission rate is bigger than 50, it's going to give me the commission, which is what I want. If the commission ever goes below 50, 50 will be the biggest number, and they'll return that one now. Let's do a practice one. Let's say I have zero dollars. So the commission now has gone down to zero, but it's still giving me 50 because the bigger of the numbers zero and 50 is 50. We can do the same thing with min. So this one's going to say set a ceiling. So in other words, I'm going to give it two numbers. I'm going to give it the maximum number it should be and the actual. So now what I'm doing is I'm saying, all right, think through. Do I want to have the actual commission or the ceiling commission? Now, if I'm earning less, it's just going to give me the smaller number. If I'm earning more than 5,000, well, it's going to give me the smaller of the two. So the smaller of the two would be the ceiling. Let me give a big commission here so you can see how this works out in practice. So now I've got an actual commission rate of $100,000. This has been a good year. But I say that the maximum I should give out is, or the ceiling is only going to be 5,000, which I have here. So when I ask what's the smaller of the two numbers, either the actual commission rate or the ceiling value, well, the smaller number is actually 5,000. And now it's going to return 5,000. So this is a way to put a floor on a number, and this is a way to put a ceiling on a number. But just think of it as you're given two numbers and you have to decide what do you want the bigger of and what do you want the smaller of. Now you can combine these together by basically nesting them inside of each other. So in other words, we could do this in pieces, right? We already have a floor here. We already have the commission here. So we could basically just do another min and say, give me the smaller of the two numbers, either that or that. So now we have both things in place. First, this one's going to make sure that the commission rate is not less than the minimum, or less than the floor. And this one's making sure that it's not bigger than the ceiling. 
And this is being achieved by chaining together the two functions. First having the commission calculated, then having the max calculated, then having the min calculated. And that gives me my result. And if I try this a couple of numbers here, you'll see that sure enough, we get $50 as the minimum commission because again, we're taking the bigger of the floor or the actual. And then I'm using that number as the input to my next one. So now I'm saying take either a 50 or the bigger number and give me the smaller of the two. So now we make sure it can't go over 5,000. And now they're chained together. So we both have a floor and we have a ceiling on our number. We can also write this in a more compact way if we want. For example, we could put the max inside. So rather than using C48, we can write max C47, C45, just like what we wrote up here. So this whole function is now nested inside of this function. So now this one here is going to go ahead and make sure that it's always bigger than the floor, or bigger or equal to the floor. And then once that's done, the min function is going to make sure that it's smaller or equal to the ceiling. So this is a practical example of using min and max in a way that makes them a little more interesting and a little more fun to try and play with.